Hey y'all, hi. So today I'm just going to put on makeup. It's going to be my current go-to makeup, which is kind of interesting because as you can tell, we just moved. The background here, I mean, it's the background, but it's also just like a surface in our studio. It's becoming slightly less chaotic and then a little bit more chaotic and then slightly less. We're two steps forward, one step back all over the house. So thank you for bearing with me. I still just have the bag of makeup that I packed when we moved over a month ago. I've been living out of this makeup suitcase, so to speak. But because of that, I've developed kind of like a go-to makeup for putting myself together, feeling polished enough so that it lifts my mood, but doesn't take too long. And I've incorporated some of the new products that I've tested during this time. It's settled into something pretty reliable that I like. And so I thought that I would just sit down and film it and chat. If this happens to be your first time to my channel, then hello, my name is Hannah. I'm a writer who reviews makeup on YouTube. I also have a book, which I'll link below. You know, I recommend it. I recommend the book. It took me like 30 years to write it. So check that out if you haven't. And let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Starting with the trusty Ilya Skin Milk. One of the things about this transition is that I didn't do a good job of setting aside skincare. I really grabbed skincare as if for like a weekend trip or even just an overnight. So there are things that I feel like are kind of integral to my skincare routine that are packed still and my skin's been suffering a little bit because of it. And that's where the Ilya Skin Milk is coming in. It's like, I'm just doing my best. It's not just that the products aren't available, it's that I also don't have the time that I usually have haven't been taking the time that I usually take to layer on different products to really moisturize. I've been doing some, but not the most. I'm at like a four out of 10 maybe for skincare right now. So I've been prepping my skin with this skin milk every time I do makeup. It's so good. And I just realized it seems like I've barely made a dent, even though I've been using it pretty consistently. A little bit goes a long way, which is good because I think it's expensive. This bottle was PR and I think I looked it up the first time I linked it and I was like, I think I remember it being slightly off-puttingly expensive, but now I'm starting to feel like it's kind of worth it because it does that amazing thing of putting like really protective, really moisturizing final layer on, but then it becomes that kind of soft, almost dry, but still extremely receptive set layer that's perfect for primer. I, I really love it. It grows on me and grows on me the more I use it. I did cut my hair. I'll show it to you at the end. Another thing that grows on me and grows on me, you know, this is about the length but there's just a lot more volume. A lot grows out of my head. It was starting to just feel like a blanket and it was feeling like I couldn't keep it healthy because there's too much of it. I couldn't like get it dry enough when I washed it. I couldn't get it clean enough. It's not just the length, but it was like the weight on the inside and it was the combined qualities of all of those layers of hair on the inside of the hair close to the scalp and then the weight dragging them down. I just, I needed all the weight taken out and taken off for a little while so that I can kind of like let my hair breathe. I was really enjoying having long hair. I think this is the shortest it's been in 15 years, y'all. I think this is the shortest it's been in 15 years. It's pretty dramatic. And maybe I'll grow it out again, but I'm so glad that I did it. It was a little bit impulsive in the same way that I don't have time to tidy up the background before I film every time. I didn't have time to agonize over my hair decision like I usually do. I like panic posted an Instagram poll, like how short should I cut my hair with pictures of celebrities as I was going to the salon. And then I was just like, I think Think this is what I want. Let's give it a try. But right now it feels like the best hair decision I've ever made. So go figure. Okay, I'm going to take the makeup out of this pouch. Oh, some hair bands at the bottom. Nice. Some hair bands that past Hannah put in here before the move and then forgot about and didn't know they were there. This is the Merit signature bag that comes free with an order from Merit. I love it so much more than I thought that I would when I first got this a couple of years ago. At first I was like, oh, it's so aesthetic. It's beautiful. Let me tell you, I receive so many of this kind of thing in the mail from brands. You know, every brand is like, here's our new product for you to test. And here's a random like pouch or zipper bag that we designed. And the vast majority of them I use to put makeup in to give away to friends and family. Like when I'm going to visit a friend or when someone's coming over, I like grab one of those and I put together a little package of PR things that I've tested and I don't need. And I give that away in the pouch. Those pouches, they're nothing to me. <laughs> but this, every time I'm going anywhere, every time I'm putting together a little selection for myself. I use this because the way that it 
just the fact that it ties, the way it's designed is so elegant and useful and it holds quite a lot. Let's start with brows. I dyed my brows again, finally, recently. So I've actually been kind of enjoying the Refi Stronghold Brow Sculpt. It looks like a pomade, and so I think of it as a pomade. The substance is pomade-like, but Refi has a different product that's called pomade, which is like a pigmented product that you draw on with a little angle brush. So I can't call this the Refi Brow Pomade because it's confusing. Then it gets mixed up with the other product. But it's not a gel either. It's like a cream that sets down. There. I feel like I don't need to even fill them in at all with a pencil or anything. There are always these magical two or three days after dyeing my brows when all I need to use is something like this and then slowly little patches start to appear and I go in with just a tiny bit of pencil here and there to fill them in and then over the I don't know two to three weeks that I usually go between dyeing them I start using more and more pencil but today I mean maybe if I were if I were fussed about it I could like fill in a little bit there but I'm not I usually default to the Kamiko brow gel which is fantastic the little tiny brush is so great for manipulating hairs and it's very strong hold but I'm on kind of a refi kick because I'm so into the new concealer. And so since I dyed my brows this time, I've been using the Refi Brow Sculpt every time. And it is also great. Speaking of the Refi Concealer, I am going to use it now. Exa Green Color Corrector, which I love, and the Refi Concealers, which I really love. All three, well, all two of these products, this one I have in two colors, they both dry down really dry and have sort of this second skin quality. They don't dry out the skin or sit in a dry way on the skin, but they aren't emollient products. Although the Refi Concealer, as you'll know if you've seen my full review of it, looks incredibly emollient and wet. Looks like kind of a wet, glistening second skin. It's really beautiful. But the Exa Color Corrector, it has a little bit of clay in it, which is really amazing for balancing out super emollient products. Like if you wear a serum-y skin tint that stays kind of serum-y, or my longtime favorite, the Rose Ink Concealer that kind of stays a bit emollient throughout the day. You know, a tinted moisturizer or a tinted SPF or something. It's a good counterpoint to those because it's very stabilizing because of the slight clay content. However, in this case, the Refi Concealers are also very stabilizing. Like these are all really stable products, which I like because that's my preference, but I'm going to use the green color corrector more judiciously than I usually do. My skin isn't looking super red today either, so I'm just gonna use like the tiniest bit and sort of blend with my fingers. Do you see my cheek there? That's from the Ilia Skin Milk. It doesn't have shiny particles in it. It's just really really leaving a beautiful finish on the skin. So there I canceled what redness was there so that I don't feel like I need to use as much of the concealer. But I still just feel like my skin is prepped for makeup. I don't feel like there's coverage makeup on it. I don't feel like it's heavy with product at all. It's partly because I really pushed it into the skin with my fingers instead of like spreading it all over with a brush. It's also because I didn't use too much. So here's what I've been doing with the Refi Concealer, which again, there's a full review. I really like it. It's kind of an unusual product. You have to shake it. Everything about it that's weird is worth it to me though because it has such good qualities. So the lightest shade, and this is one of the things that's not weird, but you know, could be more convenient. The lightest shade is too light for me, so I'm not going to put it all over my face. I'm just going to do a little under my eyes and immediately blend it out because it dries really fast. So blending it out that much, which is three dots on each side to cover basically this entire area on each side, that's the coverage that I'm getting with it. And the finish. And it's kind of, it's like the combination perhaps of the finish of this with the Ilia Skin Milk, but you can see the, that kind of glisteny wet second skin that I was talking about. You can see it like under my eyes. And I think you can also see that it's kind of a semi-sheer coverage. It's like a medium to light coverage, but because I color corrected with the color corrector, that's all that I'm going to need on that part of my face. And it just kind of brightens it up a little. It's good that it's medium light and that I can sheer it out because otherwise the color, the slight wrongness of the color would be too wrong and it would be able to work with it. So I'm going to put the same level of coverage on like the other high points of my face. And now here's the other one I have, which is shade 03. That first color was shade 01, the lightest one. Shade 03 is more neutral. It's a better match for my actual skin color, but it's a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to put it on the sides of my face for coverage of those scars, sides of the forehead, sides of the chin. 
I really love how versatile it is in terms of coverage. Most of the places that I put it on my face, it's just kind of a veil of tint that leaves behind a really beautiful, glistening, almost highlighted finish, but without highlighting fine lines because it's slightly blurring at the same time. But then there are some places where I wanted a little more coverage and I just put on a thicker layer and it provided a little bit more coverage. Usually I prefer super high pigment things to blend them out. And this is like working the other way. It's a little less pigment and then I'm layering it. I think because it dries down so solidly, I'm able to layer it pretty easily or build it up pretty well for a little more coverage on the sides of my face. But on most parts of my face, there's just not that much product and you can't really see the product on the skin. Yeah, you really can't. You just see the pretty finish. The other interesting thing about it is that you would think that I would be blending the two colors together. That's what I did with the Natasha Denona concealer with the similar color issue. The lightest one was a bit too light and pink, and then the next one was a bit too dark and yellow. Blending them together gave me a really good skin match. But in this case, I think it's because of the coverage. It's because with the lightest one, I can put it straight onto my skin and sheer it out enough so that it doesn't look weird because the green color corrector and my actual skin are kind of showing through. But this one, it's working better to do that kind of sculpting thing all over the face. That's what I've been doing every time, and I really love the results. So that's kind of been the star of the show lately for my everyday look. I'm thinking about departing from the brief. I said that I was going to be doing my everyday makeup, but I'm thinking about throwing a mascara in that I haven't tried yet. I, I think I'm going to do it, but first I have to find it. I think I know where it is. BRB. I found it. Wow, for every mascara sold, Swede is rescuing one sea turtle. Swede X billion baby turtles. I just saw that. This makeup brand, Swede, sent me some makeup and they have brown mascara. That's why I wanted to dig this out and test it because I've been wanting to incorporate a brown mascara into my everyday. They sent me two brown mascaras and I haven't tried the Pro Lash Lift. Listen to what it says on the box. A dark brown lengthening mascara that lifts your lashes from the root and creates possibly long, defined, and voluminous lashes thanks to the innovative comb-like brush. Look at the brush. It's one of these jobbies. I couldn't tell if I was getting it to focus because it's such a little stick that it was hard for me to see in the monitor if it was actually capturing it, but it's just a stick. It's a comb-like brush, but the tines are really tiny, tiny tines, tiny tines adventures over here. Let's see how it performs. As is the case with many brown mascaras, it's such a dark brown that it just looks black on me. It might as well just be a black mascara or like a soft black. What I long for is like a taupe mascara. I know that there are some out there in the K-beauty sphere, but the ones that I've seen are all like incredibly like hard drying, super stiff, waterproof lashes mascara. I want something like this in a taupe. The closest thing I found is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk mascara. That's like that burgundy color. That's a softer brown because it's a little bit mixed with red. But up close, you really can see the red in it. I want like a grayish brown mascara, like a grayish mascara. Is that too much to ask? Anyway, back to Sweet Beauty. I got halfway through the application and I realized that I'm not sure that I want impossibly long, voluminous lashes today because I'm taking my baby on a plate date with the baby of another parent who works from home and kind of juggles childcare at home with working from home, which is what Joe and I are doing. We both feel like maybe our babies need to socialize with other babies. So we're teaming up. And I don't know, I don't want to, I don't want to scare any of them with my impossibly long voluminous lashes. I'm trying to make friends over here. After the play date, I don't want it to be like, well, she's okay, but she had impossibly long defined and voluminous lashes. I don't know if we can play with that baby again. Again. That's what I don't want them saying about me. And because of that, I had to kind of cut it off at the past because it was just building and building and building those kinds of tangled lashes, which I just love. It's like a slightly brambly, tangly lash. Not necessarily wispy because there, there's a lot of fiber building going on, you know, bits grabbing onto other bits. But I bet that it become a little wispier the more that I use it. I'm definitely going to put this into my everyday makeup bag and start using it. I actually haven't been wearing masks most days. And when I have, I've been just doing a tiny bit on the like outer edges of my top lashes with the Lisa Eldridge, which hasn't really grown on me. It's decent. It's good, but not great. As you can see, I like wanted to try something else today. And I'm kind of glad that I did. And one turtle saved, although I didn't buy this. It was sent in PR. I don't know if they're saving a turtle for every mascara they send in PR.
Probably not. So my absolute go-to, haven't stopped wearing it since I found it at the bottom of my Merit makeup bag last week. Remembered how much I love it. Nothing can take its place. Lip product has been Surprise Auric Plush Ritual in Haze. It's a surprise because, you know, I'm really into bullet lip products these days, and I've been doing all of this testing of tinted lip balm. I've been looking specifically for ones in the bullet format because that's my preference. Something like this this format wise. It's like you have to use a tool to get into it or you have to use your finger to get into it. It's a little bit fussier, extra steps, maybe a little bit messier. So I'm looking for the holy grail that isn't a bullet. This is my least ideal delivery mechanism. Like it would be better even if it came in a squeezy tube because then at least I wouldn't necessarily have to use my finger or use a separate thing. It does have the thing. It does have the little thing, but I actually don't usually use it. I usually go in with a brush. I'm going to try to use it today and see if maybe I just need to be using this and that will solve all of my problems. What I was going to say is that this is my least ideal delivery mechanism for a thing like this, but the quality of it, the way that it looks, the fact that the berry tone works for me because it's quite brown, the smell, the vanilla, light vanilla scent, how nourishing it is, how good it looks, like everything about it is just completely overriding. The fact that I am swimming in tinted bullet products and it's causing me to continue to use this. That's probably way too much. Ah, mm. It's too much, but it's it's not way too much. And see, now I feel like I need to wipe this off before I put it back in. So it doesn't necessarily entirely solve the problem of that extra step. I do wish it came in like a Blistex style squeezy tube. But I love the look, the finish, the feel. I love how much it moisturizes my lips. I simply cannot stop wearing it these days. It is the perfect lip mask for everyday wear. Like it's the perfect marriage between a really, truly nourishing lip mask, an actual skincare product for the lips, and makeup or something that works with a makeup look. So that's been my everyday for lips. I have actually been eschewing cheek makeup lately because I love the finish of the Ilia. I mean, not the, the Ilia, the Refi. <laughs> it's kind of a Freudian slip because I was about to talk about something from Ilia. But it kind of is. It's the Ilia from underneath and the Refi on top because I love the finish of the Refi concealer. I feel like my cheeks look like they've got something on them and they do. It's that concealer. It's enough for me. And also it's just a time-saving thing. I promise one of these days I'm going to stop talking about how incredibly chaotic my life is and how busy I feel like I am and how rushed every moment of every day is, which actually isn't like that. It's not like I'm rushing through my days. It's not like that because it is really important to me. For example, we sit down at the meals and we have a calm moment. Like there are calm moments in my day. It's more that tasks that are extra to the regular course of events of the day, the work day. The days have become quite calendar blocked. Childcare, meal prep, and then the necessary work, the most necessary part of work, which is, for example, right now filming the video, that's like higher on the hierarchy of what needs to happen than fixing the background is. There are things that are lower down on the hierarchy of what has to happen, and they're like vying for position. So, for example, fixing the background is a little bit lower on the hierarchy of what has to happen because it's extra to the regular course of calendar block events, the things that have to happen for the day, for the, the wheels to move, you know what I mean, for the machine to, to move forward. Those things are happening. They're just, each one of them is having to wait because, for example, the background up here in the studio, there are several little tasks like that that need to happen. Fixing the background is one. On the other side of the studio, what I can see from here, all of my clothes were in boxes for a very long time. And the next step over there was taking them out of the boxes, organizing them, and setting up to film B-roll footage for a big clothing declutter, which is like the next big project. And so a bunch of stuff that has to do with that has kind of taken precedence because my wonderful friends Latoya and Simbri came from New York last weekend and helped to get the ball rolling on that. They like helped me unpack all of the boxes. They did so much. They came just to be like an extra pair of hands for the weekend. Oh my gosh, it was the greatest. They helped me get the clothes out of boxes and organized. And it made a lot more sense while they were here for them to help with that than it would have made for them to help, for example, with the background. So one of these days I'll stop talking about how chaotic things are, and maybe that should be today. Maybe this is the last day that I come to you and say, OMG, OMG, you can't imagine how it is, because it is getting a little wearisome. Just know that these things, these slightly second string things, are having to work harder than usual to get into the daily routine. That is what is going on. And bringing it all back home, my friends, this is how it's done. Cheek highlighter and or 
blush have felt like a slightly second string thing, especially given that the cheeks are so lit by the Refi Concealer. And so that step just hasn't been making it into my daily routine because why worry about it? Why take the time when this is the situation without? But when I have been doing it, when I have been adding something, and I actually did want to come and tell you this because I like it so much. And again, it's Ilia, which is a very Ilia and Refi heavy video here. This Ilia product that I tested ages ago, I think it was like a whole Ilia video or something. It's the Stick Highlighter Cosmic Dancer. This is the quintessential product for this video because this is an example of something that I just happened to put into my merit bag, into my temporary makeup bag when I was throwing it together because I was like, oh, I've been kind of liking that. And then since then, for this entire month plus, it's been my only highlighter kind of. So I've been really, really using it a lot and it has impressed me so much. And now I'm like, I absolutely love it. Where is that thing? Like when I'm looking to highlighter to kind of bring my cheeks alive. Basically, before I started using the Refi Concealer, I was using this constantly. Now, not so much, but I want to go back and tell you about how much I like it now. I like it even more than I did at the beginning because it just, this is what I do. I go absolutely ham, just like that, but like tons on, like, like that. And then I just press it in and soften the edges. And it's not so shiny that it does like a metallic thing where it builds up. You just, you can't overdo it, you know? It has that sheer, really glossy, really pretty quality, but it doesn't look like too much. It doesn't look too cakey. It doesn't look too makeup-y, you know? And I love that. I'm actually even going to do, yeah. I love a stick highlighter that you can just like crayon all over your whole face and it only looks better and better the more you layer on. And really, that has been it. This is me when I'm doing the most. Let me show you the hair. The last time I had hair this long, I was a girl child, I feel. I was a girl. I mean, I think I was in my late 20s, but to me now, it feels like I was but a sweet young thing at the time. And I was worried. And I think Joe was worried. I usually don't tell him what I'm going to do when I cut my hair because I don't want to just, I don't want to, it's not a group problem project, right? I don't want any negotiation to take place. I don't want to get freaked out. But I, for some reason, did tell him. I showed him some of my inspo images. And I think he was afraid that it was going to make a girl out of me and just be like a real throwback to when I was a tender, sweet young thing. But I, I don't feel it has done that. I mean, I think it's just experience changes the face, you know? I mean, I definitely look older, but I'm not saying that I look aged because it's not necessarily about like the slight structure change of the face or, you know, the addition of fine lines or anything like that. I think it's just experience and age also change like the way you look out of your eyes. Like it just changes the type of poise that you have, you know? And I think it's that. I think it's just at my age, it just really hits differently. And I wasn't sure about that before I did it. And I, I do think that that's the case. So I'm super into it. Moral of the story, don't necessarily be afraid to try a cut that you had when you were younger. I think also the cut itself is more skillful than the version of this that I had when I was younger because I know more about hair now, which reminds me to say what I asked for was essentially a shag haircut structurally on the inside. So my stylist went in and underneath did all of the same stuff that she'd been doing down here when I had longer hair and used a razor the entire time because my hair really responds well to razor cutting. And then the ends, just the very ends, are blunt cut. But it's not a traditional blunt cut bob. What she said, my stylist, was that it was like a shag on the inside with a blunt cut bob on the outside. So kind Kind of like a, a shag haircut in disguise as a blunt cut bob. If you have quite thick hair and you want to try a blunt cut, you can't just go in and ask for a blunt cut because it will end up really poofy and kind of triangular. So uh, I wanted to pass that along to you that she said, if you have hair like mine and you want to try this, ask for a shag haircut, essentially a short shag with blunt cut ends. So that's it. This is me now. This is me these days. If you saw me walking down the street, this is what I would look like. And that's all the makeup that I would be wearing. Thank you for being here. As I bid adieu to my era of constantly telling you how chaotic my life is. It's not going to stop being that way, but I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm going to move it. I'm going to, I'm going to ignore it and hope it goes away. And you know what? I think it's going to work. I really appreciate all of you. And you know that I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 